Good evening and welcome to Live from Prairie Lights. I'm Lindsay Park. Tonight, I'm pleased to present Josh Kelscher and Seth Abramson, who will read from their new poetry. First off, Josh Kelscher will read from Title, which won the 2013 four-way books Levis, Levis? Levis Prize in Poetry. James Longenbach says, This world, the world of human suffering, human folly, belongs to all of us, but the language... Pulsing, tender, giddy, suave, is Josh Kalsher's alone. His work has appeared in Boston Review, Slate, Jubilat, the Iowa Review, and Best New Poets 2013, among others. He currently resides in Madison, uh, Wisconsin, where he waits tables, tutors, and occasionally teaches undergraduate English classes. We're very pleased to have him here tonight. Please welcome Josh Kalsher. Hi. I'm, I'm not very good at adjusting this. I think it's okay. Is that okay? Um, I'm going to be reading from Title and also reading a few new poems as well. Um, thanks to Prairie Lights for hosting us, and it's a pleasure to read with Seth as well. Um, I'm going to start with uh, <coughs> a poem entitled Restore. These poems, this book is entirely sort of, it's located, um, it's kind of set in the cultural and geographical atmosphere of Chuuk, Micronesia, which is a small group of islands about 8,000 miles out past Hawaii. Um, so that's where it's sort of set. The poems will inhabit those spaces. Restore. <coughs> in the beginning, the whale loses track of the channel and catches the underside of its body on the reef. Its fat leaks from a gash and melts from the tops of rocks into the water. The men spearing fish see birds swooping and floating, some with bits in their beaks. The bigger waves stretch the fins and the men drop anchor and for the first time see the eyes open and close. The mouth bites to breathe, and the torn flesh drapes the surface, tinting reddish and then a darker kind of blue. One man wants to scream and touches the mouth with the back of his hand, and one man slides his bandana into the wound. The whale is strong, and when it breathes, turns the rocks to their clean sides, away from the algae. The men wedge ropes and wait for a good wave, for the right rush to come and wash to shore. In the back by the tail where the water is deeper and the current thicker, the strongest man stands and pushes what he can. And on the third try, the whale shakes its body free and into the channel. On the western beach, the men's sons stand stoic and watch the rods of the spine, the lifted fins, the body they've only seen drawn in the sand. They climb trees and knock the fruit with their feet to bring the village elders and sisters, the women who've heard and have their hair down, banging tin cans, stripping from their tops, thumping their chest bones, the boys slashing tree branches and tying rope to rebar posts. And when the men come, they cut shapes in their thighs, lines like the fins flapping futile on the shore, and they circle the whale and watch as it rocks in place, half its body coated with sand and cloth-like leaves, gone grainy in the sun, the low tide beach becoming small, the men grazing the skin with their blades, and the village crowding closer and rubbing its hands together when the knives begin to sing and rise and divide. <clears throat> Next poem is entitled in, uh, Iconoclastic. There was this church um, on one of the one of the islands with a uh, there was a Jesus and Mary uh, Pieta that, in which the 
the Mary was had been degraded by by weather, um, salt. And this poem sort of focuses, starts with that image. <clears throat> Iconoclastic. Our Lord is tall and strong and tends his lambs. He faces west. He holds a half-shredded staff in a hand held up by a vine. Here are the girls in the churchyard holding hands, hanging lays on Our Lady's neck, stacking them so her face purples and yellows with the petals and pollen the twine pressed to her lips. Here are the boys loitering, half drunk from gem clear, splayed on the side of the ridge, praying the creed by heart. In the creche, in the copra husk cradle, our Lord's eyes are crossed and bleached, glazed, specked gray from the salt and the rain that drains through his plastered hair, his skull, the split bridge of his nose. Here the columns are Roman and ragged, they chip when touched. If it is true, then when the cisterns crack and the clouds part from where a man once roped the moon from the sky, he will come in a canoe glistening at the grains with cloaks and nets overflowing. The sweetest water will fall and flood the ruts from the upland homes, and higher yet to the peaks and plateaus to the land left from the last wounds from the holy men. Here the rocks that built the road recede. They tilt and pull apart. They scatter from their bodies. The women we love sing to the trade winds, to the stems picked clean of fruit. The steeple's bottom beam <coughs> bends, and the metal twists and tangles dead leaves into knots. The women we love wear dresses that puff and press in the wind, their shapes imprinted in the pillar grooves in the cathedral grass, the gusts curving through holes in the walls, where windows once cast the saints in the churchyard, in the village, Anthony, Stephen. They could be the third lungs, our lost songs. <clears throat> so one of the things that, uh, that I experienced while I was there was there was a, uh, a mercy ship that came through uh, the island, which is basically a floating hospital. Um, it's a naval ship, and the soldiers came off and came onto the island and and uh, offered aid, and it was kind of an, an oddity to have their <coughs> mercy ship. Here come the uniformed men with their cargo and clean needles, their jackhammers and plaster bags, their steel supports, drill bits, and provisional masks packed in airless crates their locked guns tucked in their belts, driving their big engines, their American trucks in a convoy to the state hospital, the trauma center in TB Ward, leper colony, an insane asylum, the HIV unit where there's a man no one touches. Here they come with sterile gloves and test kits, the strict measures of chain of command charts, stripping the floor in the main hall and bleaching dim rooms and broom closets, Check-marking forms for tainted blood, staff-soaked scalpels and towels, soiled hands, faulty doorknobs, and doctors who should quit. <clears throat> Here they come tearing down walls, eaten to nothing by termites, promising to build them again with boards of foreign wood. Here they come through Moan with their pink-tinted triceps and tattoos, their buzz cuts freshly groomed from time in Guam, tossing quarters and dimes to the shirtless boy, running at second gear speed through the road, dodging potholes and mackerel cans, slapping a handprint on the back hatch, yelling bombs away, bombs away, bombs away. <clears throat> and sort of thinking in the same sort of mode as uh, the, the military inf infiltration, um, this part of the world, uh, in particular, the Federated States of Micronesia, has been colonized uh, four times over, first by the, the Germans and the Spanish, uh, then the Japanese, uh, then now, now the U.S. Um, the Japanese uh, came there in the 30s and uh, took over the islands, built up their naval base there, and uh, 
This poem's entitled Regiment 1941. <clears throat> we dig up stalks of corn and feed the pigs until their stomachs explode. We march in rows and close our eyes to show them we've learned. Hold a shotgun steady. Arch your back, they say from a megaphone. In a tower they cut from breadfruit wood through a window with bars. We shoot the wounded mutts on command in the head. There's a man whose name is written in symbols over his pocket, who tells us to burn the hillside, and we do for practice with the wind at our backs. We wait in a bunker to watch for what moves through the smoke. This is how the shoulder rotates to throw a grenade. And they make the motion. Here is a field of rice paddies we built by flooding the taro swamp. Here is the temple where we poured the mold of Buddha. Here is how to point a gun to a plane's window and shatter it. On the island of Totoas, we call the vines and roots where concrete will cover the clay and become a nerve center. This is the word for road. This is a jeep, they teach the girls. There are ways to ride them without falling. This is how to stop a thigh from bleeding when shrapnel gashes deep and disappears. There are ways to kill fish we didn't know and ways to hold a knife to the gills. We bury pipes and wires and learn codes meaning hide, find cover, load your guns and fire, bury yourself wherever you are. We learn the sounds for a dying propeller and the whistle, the endless spiral. On the far shore of Etten, we invent a runway from dead coral we stack and from a village we flatten with tanks. <clears throat> I'll read one more from the book and then I'll read some new ones. Um, I am available for children's parties as well, so. If you're not, so. Um, I'm not always this serious, I promise. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to end with a, this is a basketball poem. And, uh, about someone dunking. I can't dunk. Um, I, I could dunk a tennis ball, um, which feels actually pretty satisfying. It's a different kind of pleasure, though. Um. <coughs> Throw down. The buzz comes from the baseline and the rubble border to the jungle. Here at the village's one standing rim, the only cement left with lines. Even the boys hitting short shots know to hold up, shirtless in the midday sun. Even the girls stop at three notches in nearby trees. The washed up drunks jacking threes grow still. Let their misses trail off in the high grass. They know him by the shadows off his shoulders, straight from the Guam wreck leagues. The legend of cracked backboards and splintered posts, blow-bys and block shots to the bleachers, basking in the crowds, rubbing dust clouds in the windy seasons. The air ball swishes at the no-net courts of toll, the half-quiet girls towing the patched grass, staring, lonely for no one. <clears throat> Here he dribbles twice to his left and loops a no-look pass to himself, and if there's a word for the curves he made, the arc and degrees of space in his wake, lost in the launch of it all, there was enough jump under the palms of his feet for all the rolling eyes, all the bandanas flapping while he rushed breakneck to the basket, the rock grinding to a halt on the touch before takeoff, higher than any man, poster high, ladder high, higher than their father's hands cupped on his form and cocked like a neck about to bite, the ball ripping over the rim with, re with sprays of rust fleck and rotted wood as a reverb of grunts makes its way in waves. And all the boys stand up, all the almost dunkers, all the fingertip rim touchers, the stilted wrists and lead feet, all the stomping ones, the finesse boys with not enough ups or the right kicks, all the tall ones with no hops, all the jammed thumbs. They all watch the ball's slow roll to in the gravel, the endless mud from potholes never patched, praising the last bounces, a motion hanging muggy in the air, 
seeing the ball lean from lace to lace, still spinning and not stopping. <clears throat> so you have some new ones here, and I thought it'd be kind of a, a tidy transition. This next one is actually a baseball poem. Um, I say it as that just because it, the constraint comes from baseball. Uh, the constraint for this poem is that every phrase is borrowed from the type of language you might associate with someone who's at in the batter's box about to hit, or um, what someone at the plate might be thinking or saying to him or herself. <coughs> batter's box picture. Me at my most beautiful. Me locked in. Me sacrifice stance. Me dragging. Me following the spin, me in a string of fowls, me fighting off junk, me looking to go the other way, me looking to get hit, me getting hit, me sticking my shoulder out, me ducking away, me foolish, me dancing, me brave in the box, me fiddling with my hands, me fiddling with my crotch, me matching my best with his, me doing a job, me looking to make contact, me missing a mistake. Me wanting to make him pay for his, me ruining his. Me in a dry run, me in a routine. Me geared up, me focusing on my hips. Me staring him down, me loosey-goosey. Me slowing down, me simplifying, me dialed in. Me focusing on my back leg. Me focusing on stillness in the hips. Me overthinking, me conscious of leverage. Me biting my shirt. Me jawing on something, me joyful, me intimidating, me intimidated by real heat. Me with my head down, me turning my head, me turning heads. Me looking for something to drive, me impressed with his command. Me with hope, me with a surprise, me with a surprise sacrifice, me with patience, me forgetting a bad year, me with follow through, me with two hands, me with one me slapping my hands together, me forgetting what I've learned, me with my weight on my back foot, me scooting back in the box, me dead red, me in a bad spot, me choking and loading up, me being picky, me asking for time, me asking for signals, me grinding, me tapping my foot, me sitting curve, me sitting fast, me looking for ticks in his hands, me looking for a tick in his kick leg, me looking for a tick in his rubber foot, me ticked at him for coming inside. Me pausing, me with a sign of the cross, me crossed up, me missing a sign, me needing a better grip, me grimacing, me grimacing into a smile, me with dead eyes, me mouth open, me tongue out, me tongue wagging, me coming up clutch, me jumpy, me changing my stance, me rubbing my head, me changing my stance and changing my stance. Me each time, me questioning a call, me imagining the barrel, me imagining clean contact, me with outs, me with one out, me with no outs left, me taking what he gives me, me chammed, me knowing I've been beat, me gissing, me beaten, me beating it into the ground, me with another hack, me with a good cut, me cautious, me trying to fix my head, me hacking away, me heckled to death, me good eye, me good eye, me eyes still, me head still, me tough out, me out by a mile, me easy out, me running hard, me running hard the whole way when I'm already gone. <clears throat> Iron range picture. <clears throat> You'd prefer a shot of the red water. You prefer the red water, the, the clay, the iron. The iron makes the water turn red. The iron, everyone needs iron. Here, take a shot of the animal tracks. Take a shot of my hand. This is new. I'm new. I'm used to hooded flash, distance, wrinkles, noses, dirty pores. I must be quiet, must be warm. I must hold babies, naturally. I've held babies. I've blessed babies some smaller than you were. <clears throat> I have two more. Um, thanks for coming. It's been a pleasure. Birthday picture. <clears throat> 
I have this tradition that I started that I write a poem each year on my birthday. So this one, usually they're not very good because it's your birthday. You're not thinking about writing poems on your birthday. <clears throat> or you, should, you shouldn't be if you are. Birthday picture. Radio man says Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. The Colosseum, the reverence will never fall at your knees. And the children who concentrate, I have no children, no view of the body parts. Thus I am not grown. I want someone to see me gambling. I want someone dead on. Deliver a ladder. Good. I concentrate. Dead one. A ladder. I need one. From dead on and underneath. Last poem's entitled Harvest Picture. <clears throat> The first woman I had sex with lived in a town that was barely alive. And she took me once to this hill on the outskirts, this hill that was built from a buried boxcar. She had two inches worth of gummy hash. And we caught the end of the river as the river was getting its last light. It was pretty beautiful. Then from brush came hundreds, was it hundreds, of rabbits, all adults, some underfed. Our spliff ebbed, and when we'd cherry the end of it, the rabbits would turn to us and stop eating. They walked closer to us before gathering under the truck to eat grass, tangled by the wheels. The heat, she said, softened them toward us. She said they loved me, and I told her I didn't think that was funny. <clears throat> we undressed and twisted each other's nipples. Hers were little radio knobs. How lucky were we? We timed our finishing, and that was a sign we were learning how to be adults. She told me she had a plan. She wanted us to wait for the rabbits to settle under the truck and then lay on the horn so they snapped up into the metal. I told her I'd try the meat, but was afraid of swallowing a small bone. I'm used to swallowing a small bone. She joked. I laughed and kept laughing until she told me she had a story. <clears throat> One time, when she was younger and still listened to her father, he taught her a lesson. When she was passed out drunk, he woke her and told her she was no longer a good human being. He took her away to a farmhouse next to a farm that grew almonds. There was a bed and he unmade it and then told her to make it. He loosened the floorboards and she pounded in the nails before he loosened them again. There is a system for how mercy drifts into integrity. Those were his words, she said. There was ash on the dashboard and I rubbed it. I passed to her the last hit which she breathed. She breathed in and sucked an ember into her throat. Her father, she loved him. She loved her father. He was a hard man. Thank you. Thank you, Josh Kalsher. Next up, Writer's Workshop graduate Seth Abramson will read from his new poetry collection, Meta Americana. Publishers Weekly says Seth Abramson is uncommonly interested in hard questions and harder answers about how to live. Seth Abramson is the series co-editor for Best American Experimental Writing and the author of five books of poetry, including uh, 2013's Thievery. He teaches at the University of New Hampshire and reviews contemporary poetry, music, and film for the Huffington Post and IndieWire. We're very happy to have him here. Please welcome Seth Abramson. So thank you to everyone for coming, and, and thank you to Josh and to Prairie Lights. 
Uh, so I am going to read from Metamericana tonight, and I'll, I should say first, it's a sort of unusual book, and in a, a very real way, I kind of hate myself for having written it. Uh, for this reason, it's comprised of essentially longer and shorter poems, and the long poems are too long to read at a reading, and the short poems are all tongue twisters, and um, I have a very fat tongue. And so it makes it difficult to read from, but I'll do the best that I can. Um, basically, the, the book is an attempt to reconstruct previously deconstructed data of a single life, in this case, my life, to try to create something that's imperfect, but nevertheless whole in some way. And so um, just to give you a sense of the, the strangeness of the book, um, if you haven't seen it before, I'll show you the, the back of it. And this back is actually a poem called Blurbs. Um, and it might make sense given the book's called Meta Americana, so there's certainly a lot of meta elements here. And so what's on the back is, is basically things that people have said about me, all actual things. Some of them are very positive. My mother is quoted on here uh, saying something nice. And some are neutral, and some are really nasty things. And so my publisher believes I might be the first person to have put on the back of his book someone calling him evil, which someone did. <coughs> a few others, uh, a weirdo, a blustering nerd, uh, the poet Ron Silman said that I'm like, uh, describing me, saying it was like looking at my own DNA tossed into a paper bag and being shaken up. Um, David Lehman, actually, who uh, is the, the series editor for another Best American, uh, Best American Poetry, referred to me as an ill-mannered crank. Uh, I've been called an interloper, scumbag, these are all in the back of the book, um, the worst writer in America, and also, and, and I say this out of deep respect for Franz Wright, who uh, passed away recently and who I communicated with and referred to me as a r uh, dangerous little revolutionary sheep, which I found interesting because it was confusing, um, <coughs> if you actually think about that one for a second. Uh, so the first poem I'm going to read from the book is called Genesis. Much made of little, little made of knowledge, knowledge made of scholarship, Scholarship made of textbooks, textbooks made of terms, terms made of semesters, semesters made of weeks, weeks made of days, days made of decisions, decisions made of mistakes, mistakes made of love, love made of mistakes, mistakes made of blindness, blindness made of darkness, darkness made of curtains, curtains made of dresses, dresses made of flags, flags made of nations, nations made of wars, wars made of beliefs, beliefs made of Bibles, Bibles made of envelopes, envelopes made of dust jackets, dust jackets made of manuscripts, manuscripts made of skin, skin made of genetics, genetics made of chromosomes, chromosomes made of DNA, DNA made of nucleotides, nucleotides made of adenine, adenine made of C5H5N5, C5H5N5 made of molecules, molecules made of atoms, atoms made of protons, neutrons and electrons, protons and neutrons made of quarks and gluons, quarks and gluons made of guesses, guesses made of uncertainty, uncertainty made of humanity, humanity made of God. God made of Bibles, Bibles made of paper, paper made of trees, trees made of wood, wood made of rings, rings made of silver, silver made of moonlight, moonlight made of fantasy, fantasy made of cleverness, cleverness made of ridicule, ridicule made of Hondas, Hondas made of steel, steel made of Superman, Superman made of Marvel, Marvel made of DC, DC made of politicians, politicians made of Turkey, Turkey made of banks, banks made of efficacy, efficacy made of ink, ink made of blood, blood made of chocolate, chocolate made of God, God made of Bibles, Bibles made of laws, laws made of men, men made of women, Women 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 made of women. So I'm presently in a, a sort of strange tiff with the actor Shia LaBeouf. Um, if, if you don't know Shia LaBeouf, he was in the early Transformer movies. And uh, also he was Indiana Jones's son in uh, The Crystal Skull. And uh, essentially what happened was at the end of 2013, Shia LaBeouf got in some trouble because a lot of things that he was writing at the time apparently had been plagiarized directly from other people. And when he was caught, all of his apologies on Twitter were also plagiarized from other people's apologies. So at the time I wrote, an article suggesting that his, uh, his maneuvers on social media might actually be evidence of a, a new sort of experimental tendency, uh, metamodernism. And shortly after I wrote that essay suggesting he might be a metamodernist, Shia, who has said in interviews he was looking for a way out at that point of the mess he had gotten himself into, declared himself a metamodernist, 
and started engaging in all sorts of odd behavior that some of you may have read about, wearing a bag over his head, getting arrested in a movie theater for spitting on someone, all sorts of sort of strange activity. But the long and short of it is uh, that resulted in, in us having a sort of disagreement, largely I think from his side, not from mine. He blocked me on Twitter. And so in any event, I, I say all this to set up uh, the next two poems that I'm going to read. Uh, the first is a mashup of, and there are a lot of remixes and mashups in Meta Americana because of this attempt to sort of reconstruct data, but the first is a mashup of tweets that uh, Shia LaBeouf actually tweeted at the end of 2013, beginning of 2014. And then the second is an actual letter that I received. The Public Apology of Shia LaBeouf. It starts with this, words are important. But I can barely remember all the things I've done and said, sorry world. Action figures, video games, superhero movies, and iPods, which were mine alone, which served as my inspiration, they were all unintelligent, ambiguous, and needlessly hurtful vapor floating in the atmosphere. That's my fault. I fucked up. I deeply regret the manner in which these events have unfolded. I'm sorry for thinking I was being serious instead of accurately realizing I was mocking you. Even though I wish I hadn't made so many of you angry, I owe it to future generations to explain why I'm not famous anymore. I looked in the mirror and said, grow up, Shia. No disrespect, but you've got to learn from your mistakes. Stop creating. I was alone in a very dangerous situation. I got lost in the creative process and the massive disruption it's caused. I couldn't deny the facts. In light of the recent attacks against my artistic integrity, I lifted the text. Copying isn't particularly creative work. Trust is hard-earned, and I need to work on being a less controversial tweeter. Personal beliefs aside, I've let my family down. Their lives I try to read as much as I can and call it our culture. That way, they're immortal. We used to sit in a circle around a campfire. Everything we have today that's cool comes from someone wanting more of something they loved in the past. I do not believe that in the long run this is about individuals. I knew that it'd make a poignant, relevant, short, but I want my life back. This is not a publicity stunt. And I'll just mention briefly, because I, I use the term remix and, and mashup, and I don't want it to seem like I've just taken a string of tweets from Shia LaBeouf and, and put them all together, largely because this is being recorded, and you'll see the second reason when I read this next thing. But uh, the mashup that I did with his tweets is I essentially took three or four words from every one of a number of consecutive tweets, I think close to 100, and put them together, um, creating my own public apology. So I do not claim those to be the words of Shia LaBeouf. The next poem I'm going to read is called Cease and Desist. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm legal counsel for Shia LaBeouf. It has come to our attention that you are advertising that you will be publishing something allegedly written by my client. Please be advised that my client did not submit any material for publication, nor did he grant any permission to publish anything pursuant to a request. The listing of his name on your website is baffling. The use of my client's name to promote your publication is a misrepresentation, and now that you've been placed on notice, potentially fraudulent. The use of his name to promote your publication constitutes a misappropriation of his right to publicity. If something is published which he did not write, further claims based on misattribution and defamation may exist. If the publication is of a work actually written by my client, a claim for copyright infringement may exist. Accordingly, demand is hereby made that you immediately cease and desist from any and all uses of my client's name and literary property in the Best American Experimental Writing 2014 publication and all advertisements and promotions, therefore. Of course, the foregoing is without prejudice to all rights, remedies, claims, and or positions which my client may have and or maintain, all of which are expressly reserved. The subject, uh, again, of my disagreement with Shia LaBeouf was his view that copyright um, no longer exists in the United States. That was a little heavy-handed, but I'm just going to throw that in there. Um, <coughs> so uh, the, next, the next poem has to do with uh, texting acronyms. And uh, I find myself very sort of frustrated by texting acronyms because I largely don't use them. Uh, I'm in my late 30s, and so I still have that horrible tendency to actually 
text as though I'm writing a Dickens novel. And so there are no abbreviations and everything is much longer than it needs to be, which is just generally how I write anyway, but I also do it in text. So what I did is I created a poem which is uh, composed entirely of phrases that are the subject of texting acronyms. The poem is called, uh, More Will Be Revealed Later. I'm a, multi def I'm a multi-function device, my friend. Little rubber feet laughing all over you. Features, attributes, benefits. The most advanced yet accessible motherfucker lying in bed and living on Lipitor. Lots of voluntary effort, long on promises, short on delivery. I left a message on your answering machine. Quote, learn once, repeat everywhere. Mom, look what you started. Evil grin. Whatever you say, something sorry and straight, something about a small, bald, unaudacious goal, learn your shit or up and quit. Real time is quote unquote somebody else's problem. Let me know how that works out for you. I know a lot of people like that. And if you ask me, living large looks like trouble. In other words, do the right thing. Think globally, act locally. A work of art is a work in progress. Google that shit. The ideal is intercourse and inebriation. I could be wrong. Are you over 18? Are you in trouble? Smile and read your friendly manual. Okay, read the screen, stupid. What you see looks pretty good because the powers that be want to sell. Why? If I tell you, will you buy me a drink? I'm a subject matter expert with a seriously impaired imagination, quote unquote, product superior to operator, end quote, a smart little rich kid skater smiling ear to ear, sitting in my chair laughing, laughing to myself with sugar, honey, and iced tea, and still in the dark about real life. Real life is temporarily not available. Real life is career suicide. Thanks science, it's Friday. Until further notice, I'm taking a shower. What's in it for me? Jerking off, playing with myself. Don't judge me, I searched the web and spanked the monkey. A single point of contact works for me. Short on time? This says it all. Life's fucked up, there's a hole in the middle of the sea. Without a doubt, everyone is laughing at you or laughing about you. Keep calm and carry on. In search of ecstasy? Let it go. Ecstasy is weather without the weight. Change of subject. You wish I was you, caught in naught but air. Unpleasant visual. Trust me, you'd hate to be me. Toes up, tired, shaking my head, short on time, trying to keep a straight face. The list goes on. That's life in the big city. Traffic, titty bars, terms and conditions, single white females, soon to be exes, sexually transmitted diseases, standing room only, sensitive new age guys, quote unquote, not safe for work, quality control, quote unquote, this job beats no job. Thanks, quote unquote, in advance, tall, dark and handsome, try before you buy. In other words, player versus player. Sit and sweat. Same shit, different day. And the end of the world as we know it. Sleepy city, better you than me. New college graduate, double incomes, no kids, single income, two children, oppressive mortgage. What the hell is next? What's in it for you? You never know. And do I look like I give a shit? Wouldn't it be nice if well-off older folks, very sad faces, picked up ecstasy? Why should I wait? The sooner the better. Teachers are watching. Side note, who cares? There ain't no justice. Please turn off your electronic devices. She who must be obeyed, screaming with laughter, there ought to be a law, rings my bell. Roundhouse kick. Rank has its privileges. The rest are mine. Point of view is a personal problem. Piss off. So I see rainbows, butterflies, and unicorns. To be honest, what's the difference between rainbows, butterflies, and unicorns? You tell me, parent over shoulder, person of no account. People like us press lots of keys to abort. Quick question, why should I wait? Fear of getting caught, something like that? Male or female, you always have options. North, east, west, south. You all talk too much without thinking too much. But you know what? You don't know me, old man. You may already know, Portland is generally recognized as safe. In other words, on the road or out to lunch, get off the damn phone while you're driving. Overcome by events, a person in need, hitting bottom and starting to dig, first lady of the United States, get off the damn phone while you're driving. Don't ask me how I know that. Quoted for truth in your fucking dreams. Good for one night. Obligatory energy is the enemy. Obligatory energy is not too bright, out of touch, and not invented here, Portland. Not interested. Not in this lifetime. Tomorrow is canceled. Owing to a slight oversight in construction, a process too complicated to explain, I just ejaculated on my keyboard. 
my kind of place. I'm going to read two more. Um, the first one is the most egotistical poem I've ever written. I think there's a chance it's the most egotistical poem ever written by anyone. You'll have to judge for yourself. Um, you all might be familiar with the tendency that particularly I think writers have of ego surfing, which is when you Google your own name to see what the hits are. And so I thought um, one of the things in reconstructing uh, deconstructed data from my life, because I, I have ego surfed, is uh, to actually one time look up my name and take every single word that appears on my browser screen, the entire first page of results, and then remix it into a poem, and to try to use that poem to understand myself in a way that is um, deeper than perhaps Google does. Uh, so you'll, you'll see what came of that. The poem is called, Who is Seth Abramson? In March of 1776, we robots appeared in Concord, Massachusetts. Composed entirely of tools, they searched suburban American farms for mass murderer Lance Cole. On March 12th, he was found riding in the woods. His last words, shun biography, learn is, learn of. Northerners, his ghost searches for you on the road to Dartmouth. A thievery at Harvard University in 1833 resulted in a worldwide search for Howard J. Found in Iowa, huffing over a hill by Don Bieber, a journalist, Jay addressed the thievery via song. Shun biography. Just learn is and of. Bieber shared the song with just six people. A jazz man, a critic, a metamodernist author, Ronald Abramson, an editor, a Dartmouth graduate, Ray Swenson, and a poet, Roger Trout, and the attorney for Harvard, who shared it with the world. Born Seth Abramson in 1976, I can see that every word circles back. Free, Abramson, jazz, a series of phrases too, text not available, net plus, the wide world. Wide world is a lie. The world is only one spot in the universe, just one, a precise location. Ogle it and see which. Every single video of a suburb, the net exclamation of silly Americans is hypertext, a collection of images, references, and ebb. Seth Abramson is hypertext, 11668320000 seconds, 396,000 results, plus a thousand poems composed entirely of standard issue ecstasies and phrases from the encyclopedia. You can view these here. Seth Abramson is protocol. An internet is more, additional feedback, more poems and results, more commercial phrases, Twitter posts, literary contacts, and remixed poets, more Wisconsin, more Iowa, more life. Seth Abramson, use your posts to graduate, transfer, from Madison to Google, from Google to Wikipedia, from Wikipedia to quote-unquote Seth Abramson, from quote-unquote Seth Abramson to Seth Abramson. Point, click, follow, and Seth Abramson is there. Trademark. Seth Abramson, commercial poet. Catalog headshot. Single Yahoo from Wisconsin, post-poetry author. Commercial for Google. Greatest hits? Writer's Workshop Poet, Harvard Law Poet, Dartmouth College Poet, Wisconsin-Madison Poet, Greatest Hits Feed, Co-Editor of Best Experimental Three-Word Phrases. Seth Abramson is one ton of secure commercial hypertext. Seth Abramson is regarding Seth Abramson from the latest Omnidon catalog. Check out Seth Abramson, add Seth Abramson to Wikipedia. Next, Google Seth Abramson, contact Seth Abramson at school, post about Seth Abramson here, and quote-unquote relate to Seth Abramson here. Go wide, Seth Abramson. I point out Seth Abramson in Madison. Seth Abramson, blogger. Seth Abramson, blog description. Seth is from Madison. Seth is of Twitter, Wikipedia, Huffington Post poems, quote unquote, web poetry. Who is Seth Abramson? Please share. Share news of, privacy of, poems of, site organization of, terms of. Are works wards born of education? Names, age, literary protocol, schools, organizations, 10,000 ton critic journalists, email lists, feedback, web commercials, magazine links, 30 Octobers of transfers, huffing, 16th Street, in the city, 101 p.m. Barb Elliott is shopping. Buy Seth Abramson first. 
Seth Abramson versus quote unquote Seth Abramson. Seth Abramson, law school, blog editor, freelancer, quote unquote Seth Abramson, editor for Wesleyan. Seth Abramson, web poems, quote unquote Seth Abramson, web poems. Seth Abramson, words, quote unquote Seth Abramson, prize, award, Seth Abramson's press, alphabetical key, Seth Abramson's 35 plus arm, Seth Abramson's college, Seth Abramson's magazine. In college, compose entirely freelance, entirely secure. Compose poems because poems learn. Poems are like laws, a secure foundation. Help edit quote unquote Seth Abramson and quote unquote Seth Abramson may become free, just Seth Abramson. I'm gonna read uh, just one more poem. It's, uh, it's shorter and again, sort of a tongue twister. I'll do the best I can. <clears throat> no one to blame but myself. The poem is called um, We, uh, but We is spelled W-I-I in this case, like the uh, entertainment console by Nintendo. <clears throat> We're like Anthony and Cleopatra. We're like Lewis and Clark. We're like Leopold and Loeb. We're like Abbott and Costello. We're like Gilbert and Sullivan. We're like John and Paul. We're like John and Yoko. We're like Sonny and Cher. We're like Ike and Tina. We're like Diana and Dodie. We're like Thelma and Louise. We're like Jay and Silent Bob. We're like Batman and Robin. We're like Holmes and Watson. We're like Bert and Ernie. We're like Ken and Barbie. We're like Bugs and Daffy. We're like Beavis and Butthead. We're like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. We're like Hansel and Gretel. We're like Dick and Jane. We're like Jack and Jill. We're like Jan and Dean. We're like Simon and Garfunkel. We're like Captain and Tennille. We're like Cheech and Chong. We're like Donnie and Marie. We're like Hall and Oates. We're like Starsky and Hutch. We're like Mork and Mindy. We're like Laverne and Shirley. We're like Penn and Teller. We're like Bill and Ted. We're like Ben and Jerry. We're like Tom and Jerry. We're like Chip and Dale. We're like Ren and Stimpy. We're like Pinky and the Brain. We're like Itchy and Scratchy. We're like Terrence and Philip. We're like Rocky and Bullwinkle. Like Bonnie and Clyde. Like Harold and Maude. Like Regis and Kathy Lee, like Arnold and Willis, like Zack and Screech, like Urkel and Laura, like Will and Carlton, like Dorian and Turk, like Jim and Dwight, like Karen and Jack, like Sam and Neil, like George and Barbara, like Robert and Claudia, like all my exes and me. Like AT&T, S&M, T&A, M&M, A&E, B&N, S&P, A&M, D&D, A&P, B&B, P&G, P&J, R&R, D&G, H&M, M&A, A&F, P&W, B&E, A&S, W&M, J&J, B&O. OMG, CEO, IBM, FYI, TMI, FAQ, KKK, MLB, GMC, TNT, TSA, DOA, MMA, DWI, EMT, FCC, LLC, AIG, XXX, PBC, PNC, ENT, NIH, TWA, RPI, TDK, AGI, OMB, US, ID, AC, TD, IQ, HD, GE, FX, GQ, DQ, AA, NA, BJ, BM, MD, KO, ED, OD, AI, LP, RN, IP, VD, YA, AV, EZ, XX, NH, MS, JP, LB, SB, PA, WC, MJ, AD, CC, ID, PI, BI, ED, OP, LO, DA, BA, A, Oi, um, ah, uh, ah, uh, hmm, mm, er, eh, ah, uh, um, shh. Thank you very much.